The purpose of this screencast is to show students how to set up their APA style student paper as well as a brief review on APA style citations. The learning objectives for this presentation are as follows. Explaining what is APA style, setting up your APA paper, creating APA citations, showing you how to adjust citations generated from the databases, paraphrasing, quoting, and in-text citations, as well as how to set up a research appointment for further assistance. What is APA style? APA style was created by the American Psychological Association, and it is used to cite sources in the social sciences. The version of APA style that is demonstrated in this video is APA 6th edition. The importance of citing your sources. Citing your sources means that you are providing the reader with the proper information to track down the sources, ideas, and information that you used in your paper. Citing your sources is important for several reasons. It helps you to avoid plagiarism. It gives credit to the source and the scholars that provided you with this information. And it shows that you have done enough research on your topic and that the information is accurate. For these reasons, it's important that your citations are accurate Anytime you decide to use someone's research, their ideas, or information, you are required to cite. When you quote directly from a source, you need to cite as well. And even if you summarize the information you read and put it in your own words, you still need to cite the source and where you found the information. Citations are going to look different depending on what type of sources you are citing. It's important to consult the APA manual or contact your librarian if you are uncertain about the accuracy of your citation. The citation examples we will use today are going to be for journal articles. Setting up your APA paper. To set up your APA paper, simply visit the website listed here, libguides.broward.edu slash APA underscore citation. We will visit there now. Once you're on the APA citation homepage for Broward College, you're going to go to the tab at the top of the page that says formatting your paper. Once you click on the tab, you'll scroll down to the section that says sample documents and supplemental materials. You will need to click on the document that says title page and first page template for Microsoft Word. This is what you will use to help you format your APA style research paper. Once you click on the link, it will download the template for you. You can click it to open it up as a Word document. This is a copy of the template right here. This is an editable Word document that you can utilize for any number of APA style papers. The first thing that you want to do is replace the title with your current paper title. For this one, I'm going to name it APA Sample Student Paper. You will put your first and last name here and your institution. Your professor might require that you add additional information such as the course name, the course number, professor's name, or even the date. Be sure to consult with your professor to ask and see what they would like you to include for the title page of your APA paper. The next thing you're going to do is go into the header section, which is at the top of the paper. You will need to double click over the title here to get into the header. Please keep the title running head where it is. What you will need to do is, in all caps, come up with a shortened title for your title here. Mine is already very short, so I can keep it as is because it will leave me with the 50 character limit that is already set here. So I will simply type. APA sample student paper in all caps. The numbers are already there, so no need to edit that information either. Just please remember if you have a very long title for your APA paper, this running head in all caps should be no longer than 50 characters. You can identify the number of characters or words by going to the bottom of your Word document, clicking on the option that says words here and this will show you how many characters and spaces are in the full title. You will need to double click to get out of the header 
Now we're going to scroll down to the second page of your APA style paper. As you can see, this one also requires a shortened title. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same exact title that we used on our first page, which is APA sample student paper. It should also be in all caps. The only difference is it will not have the words running head. In this instance, I simply need to make sure that this section of my running head is left aligned. So I will click over here to make sure it's left aligned. If the numbers move with it, you simply select the number and hit the tab key and it will move it back over to the right. Now you double click to get out of your header and then you're going to want to go ahead and put the full title of your paper right here. Now that we have the title and the introduction for our paper, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to list a section heading. So anytime that you're moving on to a different topic within your paper, you're going to want to include it as a heading. For example, if we are writing a paper about reading comprehension, then I'm going to hit enter and start my new paragraph with a heading that is titled reading comprehension. This needs to be centered and it also needs to be bolded. Now, oftentimes we might find that within one section we have some subtopics that we need to cover. So if you feel that you need to have subtopics within your APA paper, the next appropriate heading is going to be a level two heading. This one is going to be to the left and it will also be bolded. So this one we are going to title phonological awareness because it is a subsection of reading comprehension. The other thing that you want to be aware of is that even your conclusion will require a level one heading such as reading comprehension. So once you get to the end of your paper, you're going to need to center it and type in the word conclusion to indicate that you're at the end of your paper. If I fill this in with text, you will see an example of what the paper might look like. I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see what it looks like. So in this instance, you have your title page with your running head, as well as your title, name, and Broward College. On the second page, you have the running head again, but without the word running head in all caps as well. You have the title of your paper at the very top there. Then you have your section heading. You have your section subheading. And then at the very end of the paper, you have your conclusion here. The very last thing that you will need to do for your APA style paper before you start writing is to set up your references page. In order to set up the references page, it's very important to insert a what is called a page break. The page break is simply an indication to the Word document that it should not enter any additional words or text past that point. So this makes it so that your references page will not be disturbed if you add, remove, edit, or delete anything from your paper body. To do so, all you're going to do is go to where it says insert, and there is a page break option right there at the top of the page. You're going to click the button that says insert page break, and that's it. In this instance, you want to make sure that you center and just type, start typing in the word references. Please do not bold this and please do not underline it. Just keep it simple as references. The other thing that you will need to do for your references page is to make sure that there is already a hanging indent in place. To do so, you're going to select the empty space that's on the paper below the references then you're going to go to the option that says format and the option that says paragraph. 
In Microsoft Word on a Windows system, this will be located on the ribbons up top here. If you go to Home, you will always see an option that says Paragraph. Either way, you can also right click and click on the option that says Paragraph as well. From here, you're going to want to go to the indentation section, go to where it says Special, drop down the list, and click on Hanging. This will create the hanging indent effect that is required for all references pages in APA citation style. Creating APA citations. This is an example of the components that are going to be in every APA citation for a journal article. Because this assignment requires only journal articles, this is the only citation example that we will use. As you can see, it has different components. The first thing that you're going to notice is the author's name. This example article has three different authors. The names of the authors are separated by commas. That is how we know that there are three of them. The other thing that you want to notice is that the author's names are listed as last name, comma, first initial, period, middle initial, period. In this instance, you will always have the last name appearing first. Same thing with the second author. There is the last name here with a comma and the first initial with another comma. And the last person there has a last name, comma, first initial with a period. These punctuation marks are very important to take note of. The next thing you're going to see in every APA journal article citation is the year that the article was published, as well as a period after the year of publication. The next thing you're going to see is the title of the article. The title of the article is in sentence case. This means that most of the words besides the first letter in the first word and proper nouns are all going to be lowercase. Please keep in mind that if there is any type of semicolon, I'm sorry, if there's a colon in this title, then the word, the please keep in mind that if there is a colon after this title, then the first letter of the word that occurs after the colon will also be capitalized. So in this instance, you have Iranian and English, which are both capitalized as well as reading, which is capitalized. Everything else is going to be in lowercase. And of course, there is a period at the very end of the article title. The next thing you're going to see here is in italics, the name of the journal, there's a comma, and then there is the volume number and the issue number for the journal. All of this information is located in the article details. We did look at the article details in the initial video that we reviewed how to do research and find online sources using Broward College Libraries. So every article you find in Broward College Library databases will have this information for you to create the citation. You'll notice that there is the page numbers right here with a period, and then there are the words retrieved from. And after retrieved from, I have listed the URL link to where the source can be found. These are the basic components that you're going to find in every journal article citation for APA style. Now, I'm going to show you an example of how to create a citation using the information that we will find in an article. As you can see, we have article details here, the title of the article, the name of the author, the name of the source journal, the volume, issue number, as well as the page number. And we also have a link right here to get to the article. I've already opened it up here. And as you can see, the link has the same information as our record here from Broward College. You can also see the full text of the article here, which also contains, once again, the same information and enough information for us to build a complete APA citation simply by using what we see on the page here. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it side by side to our Word document that we were working on earlier. 
This is our references page, sample references page to the right, and this is the article that we are trying to cite over here to the left. The first thing that we're, that we're going to do is look at the author's name. As you can see, it's already last name, comma, first name for us. So all we will need to do is put the last name, which is Bogale, comma, Y, period, N, period, because that is the author's initials. The next thing we will need to do is type out the title of our article in sentence case. Two things you want to notice here. Firstly, is that I capitalize the S in strategy because it occurs after a colon, as I mentioned earlier. The next thing is that, as you notice, the Microsoft Word document automatically moved over the second line to create a hanging indent for me. The next thing we're going to do is put the title of the journal here. So we have the author's name, which we just used. We have the title of the document here. And now we want the title of the journal where it's located. It's located in the International Journal of Curriculum and Instruction. And that title is going to be in italics. And in italics, again, I'm going to list the volume number, which is volume 10. Take that off. And in parentheses right next to it, I'm going to list the issue number. This is issue number two. And then I'm going to put another comma here. And the page numbers are from page 93 to 117. And then I'll put my period at the end there. And so as you can see, all of the information is located here. Now, I'm going to put the URL link for where this article is located. As I mentioned earlier, I had the article up already. So I'm going to copy this URL. And I'm going to put the words retrieved from and I'm going to paste that article there. As you can see, it messes with the formatting here. So I'm going to use my little clipboard and I'm just going to use the option that says keep text only because that will make sure that it doesn't mess with the formatting that I've already put up here. Now, I don't know if you've been keeping track of this, but there's one thing that is actually missing from this citation that I did not do at the very beginning. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I'm missing the year. So based on my original presentation, I mentioned that there was the author's name, the year, the title of the article, the title of the journal, the volume issue number, pages, and then where you retrieved it from. So in that instance, I will need to go back in here and include the year 2018. And that is my complete citation that I've built from scratch. Do keep in mind that there are some other ways that you can get your citation from the databases directly without having to do all of this work on your own. Citations generated from databases. So citations that are generated from databases are going to be those citations that are located in the toolbox that you'll find on most of the Broward College databases. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. So this is our example from earlier. And as you can see over here to the right, there's a toolbox that you can use. And if you scroll down that list, you're going to see a button that says Cite. You can simply click on the Cite button and scroll down this box here until you see the APA citation right here. Now, as you can see, the one thing that is missing from this APA citation is the retrieved from, which is showing where we found this information. So that's one thing you're going to want to do is when you generate the citation in the databases, you want to make sure that you're looking closely at the information that's inside of the citation to verify that it is formatted correctly. So I'm going to copy this over, and it's going to be a simple matter of pasting it into 
my Word document that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to paste it in there. And as you can see, whenever I paste something into the Word document, in this instance, there's a, a highlight that occurs over the Word document here, or I'm sorry, over the citation here. We don't want that highlight there. Before you paste anything in, just make sure that you hit enter in your last citation. So that way when you paste it in and you use the match destination formatting, it matches the destination formatting of the format that you had in the previous citation. Now to fix this citation, as you notice here, the title is not in sentence case, like our title is up here. So that's one thing you're going to have to fix here is to change each of these words to sentence case, except for strategy, conceptualization, and EFL. The other thing is, as mentioned earlier, this doesn't have a website where it was retrieved from. So you're going to want to make sure you go back into the databases and look for that link that will show you where the actual article is located or copy the link at the top of your page here. And that's what you're going to be including when you're looking to correct the citations that you're getting from these databases. So do keep that in mind. This is a very easy and quick way to get your citations done for your references page, but it does still require that you do a little bit of editing to make sure that the citation matches up with what's currently APA 6 edition. Now we're going to go into paraphrasing, quoting, and in-text citations. Typically speaking, most students will start writing their paper and attempt to use the in-text citations or attempt to build an in-text citation without having a citation done in the references page. My advice to you is to make sure that if you decide to use any bit of information from an article, please create a reference citation, which is the citation that occurs on your references page, create a full citation, and then start using your in-text citations based on that reference. So for when we're paraphrasing, if I'm going to use the example of the citation that we just made, you can see here that I've summarized the sentence from that source. It says, even though some Ethiopian students study English over 12 years, when they arrive at universities in the United States, they still struggle with reading competence at the university level. And then I have in quote, I'm sorry, in parentheses, the last name of the author, a comma, and the year that it was published, close parentheses, and a period. The same exact summary or paraphrase can be said in this next one here. So I have Bogale, and then I have 2018 in parentheses to indicate the year. Observe that even though some Ethiopian students study English for over 12 years, when they arrive at universities in the United States, they still struggle with reading competence at the university level. These are saying the exact same thing. They're just being paraphrased in two different ways. These are both appropriate for APA style. You can use them both. The question is, how did I know what to use in my in-text citation? So the thing is, I always based my in-text citations on what the actual citation looks like in my references page. So let's go back to that citation. This is the citation from our references page, the one that's correct. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one right here. And as you can see, I know that that's the author's last name here, and I know that that is the year. So this is a really easy way to make sure that your, that your in-text citations are correct before you start writing, is just to make sure you have your citations done on your references page before you start writing and using in-text citations. It is much more difficult for you to go back in and change every single in-text citation than it is for you to simply have your references ready and do the in-text citations correctly the first time around. So all in-text citations are going to be based off of your full citation that occurs here in the references section. This needs to be done first before you start writing your paper. We're going to move on to direct quotes. So this is a direct quote from the same article written by Bogel. And you can see here it's the same situation where I have two of the same exact quotes, but just cited in different ways. In this first one, it says, after the students were taught an explicit reading strategy instruction for a semester, the participants exhibited significant process in their reading achievement. Then I have the author's last name, comma, the year, 
comma, and then the page number where this uh, quote occurs with a period at the end. And so you want to make sure that you're including all three of these components when you're taking a direct quote from an article. The example below is the same thing. Vogel, 2018, found that after the students were taught an explicit reading strategy instruction for a semester, the participants exhibited significant progress in their reading achievement. And then at the end here, I have the page number in parentheses as well. So these are both appropriate examples of how you can cite something using APA style citations. The last thing I want to show you is how to make a student research appointment. So just in case you decide that you want to get a little bit of extra assistance with your in-text citations, with your references page, formatting your paper, or even doing the research for your paper, you can also you can always set a student research appointment with a librarian. You can either go into your D2L library resources page, or you can go to brower.edu slash library, and you can click the student research appointment link from there. Let's look at it from D2L. So you're going to go to your resources tab at the top here, click on library resources, and then from there, scroll down to the section that says Ask a Librarian, and you're going to click on the button that says Research Appointments. From there, you can see a list of available librarians. You simply select whoever is available and go ahead and pick a date as well as a time and fill out this short little form here to let them know the reason for your research appointment. You can also upload your document here. So if you have your paper already written or if you have your references page already worked out and you need someone to look over it, you can upload the paper to your research appointment so that the librarian can have it before the beginning of your research appointment. At the moment, we're offering online appointments and appointments by phone, so please choose whichever option is most appropriate for you. Um, and also keep in mind that the appointments are anywhere between 30 minutes to one hour long, depending on how much assistance you do need. Okay, thank you for watching. If you need any additional research assistance with your citations, please feel free to set that research appointment and meet up with a librarian. I hope that this video was helpful to understanding APA citation style.